But it looks to me like Democrats are willing to surrender great American cities like Philadelphia to the criminals. What do we do? Yeah, it does seem like that. And, and think about this, Steve. That they've had a Democrat mayor in Philadelphia since 1950, 72 years, uh, 58 years of a, of a Democrat city council, no Republicans since then. And, and this, the city's collapsing underneath the weight of failed policies. And it does seem like that, that they don't care about, no, they don't care about the people of the city. I mean, you have uh, grave diggers uh, down in Philadelphia that, that are on record saying they can't keep up with the graves for the 15 to 18 year old kids. Latino, uh, Phil, Latinos in Philadelphia are starting to break from me big time. We're, we're also making an appeal to African Americans here. You know, you've, you've tried Democrats over and over. They, they say the same song and dance every two or four years, and your, your babies are dying around you. Uh, my wife and I went to Kensington, the only open air drug market in America. It was heartbreaking and devastating to see the, the, the disaster down there and the destroyed lives. And once again, the Democrats, especially my opponent, has done nothing about it. You know, it is remarkable because the sad thing is, for those on the left, and I'll even go back to um, traditional Democrats, not these radical socialist bomb throwers that we have currently uh, in charge of the Democrat Party, but traditional Democrats used to care about average people. Well, you know what, Doug? There are average people in places like Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and, and cities all over Pennsylvania that are basically caught in war and drug zones where gangs are in charge of the corner, open-air drug dens like you talked about, and they can't get out. They might be senior citizens that are stuck in the building they've been in for 30 years, and they can't afford to get out. And yet their streets are not ruled by police. They're ruled by thugs and gangs and drugs and violence. My God, how do we help those people, Doug? And you're right. Uh, we, My wife and I, and we did not go into camping with camera, but I don't I don't like politicians and their games. And so I went there. I wanted to meet people and see uh, one grandma raising many kids. Uh, she she uh, owns the house. She, she's stuck. She can't get out. Can't even let her kids go to the park. That, that the, her kids, know, her grandkids know the difference between firecrackers and gunshots. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that you know, professional soldiers like me know. Are you kidding me, little kids? Another uh, Latino mom was there. and She's like, yeah, I, I can't leave the city. I don't have the money. And she's also trapped. So how we do it is electing, you know, a law and order governor. I, you know, I know the Senate race is important. The, the Senate race, you know, Pennsylvania can't do anything for crime and law and order. The governor, I can do that on day one. How I'm going to do this, you know, physically, of course, is number one, I'm going to change the culture because my opponent is part of the beef on the police cabal. He's part of the Antifa BLM garbage. He supports them. He backs them. Uh, so on day one, I'll have the backs of my law enforcement. Uh, um, additionally, I'll be working with the House and Senate to expand a number of officers on the ground and make sure they have the resources necessary. Additionally, I'll be seeking authorization from the General Assembly to surge special prosecutors into Philadelphia. So if you do the crime, you're going to do the time. And we want to make the streets safe again. We're going to do it. 